One of Japan's most famous men has collapsed in shambles. His mind is exhausted and his tendons are torn. He'd sacrificed his life and got everything he wanted. So where did this dream he had in the mountains of Hiroshima go so wrong? Over 30 years prior, Fuchu native Kubo Taito had a vision, as he listened to Bon Jovi while he was delivering newspapers. And after reading some stories about ghosts and vanished orphans in Greece, Kubo made up his mind and began to draw. He was going to become a mangaka, with absolutely no idea how to actually become a mangaka. He wanted to draw his favorite stories like King Nikuman and Dragon Ball, but he could only draw fan art, forget actually constructing a story. Regardless, Kubo decided to have a go at it anyways, and submitted Fire in the Sky to a manga competition in his junior year of high school. And while he might not have won first place like a boy named Oda did a few years before him, he definitely won something. Hello, Kubo here. Hi Kubo, I'm Asada, a juror for Hofstep. Oh, thank you. Well, it was an honor being a finalist, though I would have rather won. I'm actually calling about that. Hmm? Would it be possible for you to draw another one-shot right now? Your skills I'm sorry, I, I can't right now. Maybe after graduation. Would it be possible for you to draw another one-shot right now? Let's do it. Awesome. Give me updates on it. Ugh. No, oh, Asada, I'm telling you, this guy is shit. Why do you believe in him so much? I, I told you, Chief Editor, Romance Dawn has potential- I know potential when I see it, Asada. I mean, With I don't Asada's encouragement, 18-year-old Kubo wrote a story about androids and drugs, which became his official debut in the summer of 96. Happy as he was, Kubo's excitement wouldn't last long, as a reader's popularity survey placed him at number 6. One place behind that Oda guy. A success more fulfilling only came later in the year, as Kubo's Kokumajishi Urara receives vastly more positive reception on release. Because of Urara, Asada started to talk more and more about fully serializing a complete manga, which made me think about it a lot too, and changed But my despite idea. all his thinking, Kubo didn't want to write a manga. In fact, it took Weekly Shonen Jump reserving him a spot to get the rookie to act. Now with his childhood magazine going out of their way just to get him to draw, Kubo relented. Though the traumatic events that followed made him wish that he didn't. While Bad Shield United came out alright in the end, no one involved is happy about it. Kubo himself had been forced through one of the most rushed production periods of all time, going from blank page to finished story in a matter of weeks. Having crammed out the story at lightning speed, Kubo was physically and mentally spent. So when he received a summons to Tokyo from none other than the chief editor of Shonen Jump itself, he didn't really know what to think. It could very well be an extremely good sign. The legendary editor behind Dragon Ball was impressed with his work, or it could end up how it actually was. Your manga is shit! Sir, I don't understand what you- Oh, forget it. You manga are all the same. Sir, I'm serious. Take these! Read these and come back to me with a better story that actually sells. Hey man, you alright? Piece of shit. It's okay, Kubo. He's like that to everyone. I, I mean, I've been fighting with them for weeks just to get one of our rookies' mangas through. Like, he's, he's just like that. I don't think I want to do this anymore, man. And so he did it. After the Tokyo incident with chief editor Torishima, Kubo dissociated from manga making and dropped off the map. And with his own battles to fight, Asada's attention quickly got swept away as he battled with Torishima to let another one of his rookies' series into serialization. The name of that rookie was Aichiro Oda, and the name of that series? One Piece. Upon Asada's urging, Kubo reluctantly began drafting another story. But when he presented it to the board of editors, they bizarrely broke tradition and approved the story even though he only showed them one chapter storyboard. Whether or not Asada pulled some strings behind the scenes, we'll probably never know. But whatever the case, it resulted in Kubo changing his pen name and using the 1.5 million yen he saved up delivering newspapers to move to Tokyo to reintegrate into the industry. While Zombie Powder was definitely a big achievement as Kubo's first official weekly manga series, it was written in a catastrophic state of mind. Kubo, still traumatized by the Tokyo incident, was almost independently inoperable, furiously drawing in order to keep up with Zombie Powder's weekly pace, something that happened to impress Asada a lot, but was near panic inducing for Kubo, not really catching up with a pace until the very end of the series in the year 2000. Even in these circumstances, Zombie Powder seemed to reinvigorate Kubo, who eagerly submitted another story, hoping for the same swift acceptance that Zombie Powder had received. 
Luckily for him, the decision was swift. Unluckily for him, the decision was no. Like deja vu. Kubo's confidence instantly evaporated. And now with Asada being even more busy than he was before, was really interesting. Kubo began to recede into the shadows. There was actually this one I really liked, but it wasn't the reach it But luckily for Kubo, word in the manga industry I want to see more. tends it's to spread. Shame. Thank you for the mail. What the? Dear Kubo-san, I recently read your submission. Impressed by your ability to draw and create stories. I know it's probably disappointing to be rejected. I encourage you to try submitting your story again. Sign stories like King Toriyama and Dragon Ball. Akira. Like a flash of lightning, Kubo resubmitted his story. And after winning first in a reader's popularity survey, the editing board let Kubo's prototype through. And Bleach was released. But as successful as Bleach was, and it was pretty fucking successful, this is far from the end. Mangakas aren't products of their stories, their stories are products of them. And while Bleach ran for some 15 years, towards the end, Kubo started to realize, where do you go after your story ends? How many times am I gonna have to tell you, Tarada? This isn't gonna work. But sir, the series just needs a well, revamp. Well, unless you have something groundbreaking, please One don't. One of Japan's most famous men has collapsed in shambles. His mind is exhausted, and his tendons are torn. Fatigued and exhausted, the legendary mangaka resigned to his couch, deciding that his manga career was over. Harassed off of Twitter and in excruciating pain, Kubo quickly declined any job offer that came his way, even if they caught his eye. Dear Kubo, I work for Sega, and I really admire your work. I wanted to ask you if you'd like to be a lead character designer for our upcoming PS4 game, New Sankara Wars. Tarada. Hi Tarada, I appreciate the offer, but I'll have to decline. Well, I've never played the Sakura Wars franchise, and I'm in no condition to work. What do you mean? Give me a few months. After recuperation, Kubo began working his first game franchise gig, and went on to do a few more. For a cultured gamer like himself, it was kind of refreshing, and with no insane deadlines, he could actually relax. 20 years after Bad Show United, Kubo wrote his next one-shot for Shonen Jump's 50th anniversary. And 22 years after the first volume came out, Kubo can finally present the animated final arc of his masterpiece. Alongside another more recent legend, 